Bom, tecla SAP, vamos embora. Good afternoon. Uh, I don't know if everybody was here at last class. Everybody was here? Okay. Um, then uh, we are going to see several texts about how to write good papers. Some are more technical, some are more um, uh, emotional. Uh, 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 a report about a, a, a housewife uh, uh, becoming a good researcher, a doc doctoral student. And then uh, I, I think this uh, variety of texts make us more aware of how are they, how, how is the diversity of uh, experience that the people live uh, when, when becoming a, a researcher. Okay. Uh, the first text is about a, a guy who is writing from, uh, from the point of view of medicine, the, the, the medical a, a area, and then uh, he says, which are the most common moves when we are writing papers? Uh, we can think about these moves as chess moves, like taking the queen, a uh, checkmate, and etc. It's a good metaphor. So uh, he he tries to explain which uh, moves are more common when we write articles, when we write papers. So uh, in a literature review, which uh, which moves are more common? In the methodological procedures, which, uh, which um, moves are more common? In the data analysis, which moves are more common? This is the kind of, the, of information that the author, John Skelton, brings in this paper. I'd like uh, that everyone tried to read the first sentence uh, of the paragraph so even uh, when we don't, don't know exactly how to speak the, the text, uh, it, uh, we are warming up to, 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 to catch up the conversation, the dialogue in, in this class. So who begins the background section? OK, I may begin. <laughs> Background. An increasing number of people involved in medicine are under pressure to publish research, but there is little understanding of how to describe structured writing. Aim. Who is going to read the aim? Uh-huh. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, I'm gonna put more zoom so everyone is able to see better. Better? Okay. Method? Who is gonna read? Okay, results. Discussion, okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, you may think like chess moves, uh, taking the queen, checkmate, and etc. In the article, move 
is like uh, stating what is the concept of the theory, stating uh, what uh, are the main uh, results of the, stu uh, uh, of the study, um, stating uh, which, were, which was the methods that were used. So each uh, uh, statement is, is called a move in this, in this paper. So, conclusion. Okay, it is possible to derive from this study a template for structuring academic, academic medical writing. So, uh, besides these, these moves uh, are, were, were seen in papers reading in the medical area, we, uh, we are able to see these moves in any area from the research, academical research. So we can see this in history, in uh, mathematics, in any area, these moves are common. So I, 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 I thought th this was, it was interesting to put this paper in the bibliography of these this classes because of these common moves that we all have to do when writing papers and theses and dissertations and everything. Okay, introduction. Writing for publication is an important skill for, incre for an increasing number of people in medicine. Duh, in any area. <laughs> there is a growing literature within the field of applying applied linguistics on the structure of scientific research paper, much of it discussed or alluded to by Swales, and there is a, a now substantial body of work on the sociology of the scientific research paper. Uh, the only difference we see in the style of writing papers is that when you see a science text from the 15th, uh, 15th uh, century or older centuries, the texts were very more um, detailed. The, the texts were more um, the, were longer, and uh, there the, uh, there was not a, a custom of uh, writing papers this short like today. Uh, people sometimes say that we are living in the academic, uh, academic uh, uh, area, uh, salami culture. We, we slice our research in, in, in many pieces, so we are always publishing little papers with a little piece of results from research. Uh, Okay. It was assumed that an author seeking publication wishes to stake a claim in the scientific community by shaping knowledge in, a, in an appropriate manner. So this appropriate manner is the set of customs that we are used to see in the papers from the themes that we know. It may vary a little if we, if we, if we are writing from a um, storyteller from a writer point of view or a um, doctor or lawyer and a teacher point of view. These uh, uh, things and areas make a little difference, but uh, in general we, we have similar sessions and moves in the, in the papers. <coughs> okay, method. The corpus consisted of 50 research art articles published in the original paper section of the journal between January, January 1989 and March 1993. The corpus was then subject to a form of move structure analysis. Everybody knows what is a corpus? Corpus is the set of texts, the, the whole text that we are going to use to analyze in your work. So, uh, 
ev everything that was transcribed in your interviews may constitu constitute a, a corpus for your research. If your study is a documental one, uh, these documents, all these documents may, uh, may form your corpus. If you're uh, writing a, a literature review study with just bibliographic research, all the, the papers, theses, and dissertations, and everything are your corpus. So the, the corpus is the entire body of documents you are um, researching. Move structure analysis tentative, tentatively assigns a function to a stretch of reading or spoken text, identifies that function with one or a set of exponents with which signal its presence, and seeks to establish whether or not the pattern identified is a general one by reference to ostensibly similar text. So, um, instead of categorizing that data like Bardin teaches how to do, the author um, tries to, to watch which uh, general moves are made inside a corpus of papers inside the medicine area. So uh, instead of categories uh, being, being constructed with uh, interviews and documents and etc., the the categories are called in this in this text moves that are uh, seen in the papers. Okay, a move is in principle identifiable by the common association of function and exponent. Okay. Function and, uh, is the intention of the author of the paper. An exponent is the sentence that the author used to make uh, clear that intention. If the writer is to make his or her own judgments about the strength of constraint which operates with respect to a particular move, information about just how typical it is must be readily ava available. So, uh, an author that is making a move that is not very common may uh, usually have to explain, to justify why he or she is making that move. Okay, as only Original papers with an introduction, method, results, and discussion structure were eligible for inclusion in the study. Six of the original sample were excluded and replaced at random. A total of 15 moves were recognized, four in the introduction, three in the method, four in the results, and four in the discussion. Table 1. Okay. So the author does not name in this table which were the co more common moves in the in each section, introduction, method, and etc. So we are going to skip this table analysis and continue with the text because just in the text the author says which were the main moves. So in the introduction, generally. The section was to create a research space by stating the relevance of the stu study, contextualizing, contextualizing it in the literature. I need a phono phonoaudiologist <laughs> claiming its novelty and stating its purpose. So the first move, move one, asserted the importance of the field of study and typical exponents were important, important, central, common, expanding, evolving, and growing. So, uh, common statements are, uh, it's important, 
uh, this research is important because of that, that, and that. Or it is central, uh, it, it is a central concern in the study to do that and that and that. So that kind of statement that uh, makes, makes clear why this is to, study is important is the move on, okay? Uh, here are some examples. The author says that this move occurred in 76% of the paper studied, and in 62% of cases, this was really the first move in the paper. Okay. Okay. Move two. It's somewhere here. Okay. Move two. Ah, the second move. The second move was a disc discussion of previous literature whose function was to contextualize the study in a recognized research tradition. So, uh, when we talked uh, last class about how to write a good introduction, I, 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 I said that um, there, was, there were three techniques that are more common. The first technique is uh, there is a, a big wall of theory that is already built, and I am trying to put another uh, brick in that wall, just like in the in the Pink Floyd. Uh, 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 oh, uh, I don't know how how to say album. Okay, uh, and then. Um, when you try, when you put that brick in the in the big wall, you don't question uh, which are the other constructs for that wall. You just say that your your brick is important because of that and that and that. The second technique is uh, when you say there is a gap in the in the theory of the area in the in the text and papers and books of that area. And you will uh, are going to fill that gap with your paper, or at least tr try to fill in part of that uh, uh, of that gap. And the third technique to to state the importance of your study is try to to say that everybody is going in a stream to one side. You see, there there is a. a, a um, a big, big hole in that side that everybody is going to fall in that, that hole. And so you're, you are go not going to that side, you are going to this side. So you, you go against the stream because of that and that and that. You have to state why the, the stream is wrong and why you are right. This uh, third uh, technique is a little more bold, more you have to be a, a very more brave and courageous to make that move. But if you make that move, you have to prove why your 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 statement is, is right. Okay, move three. Ah, draw attention to a gap in the literature and asserted that a particular research question required an answer. In medicine area, this is very common like this is, uh, like it's stated here. But in other areas, we, we don't see very, very much. Okay, move four. Stated the writer's aim, typically to fill the gap indicated at move three. So in the medical area, 60% of introductions in the 50 papers analyzed, had these these four moves, and in in half of the sample, 
they had they, they appeared in the order one, two, three, and four respectively. Method. Okay. Move five. Identify the population to be studied, its exponents being quite straightforwardly, numbers and dates and labels of occupation, such as social social role, class, doctor, patient, social class, and and so on. So if you don't name your population, you don't name your sample, you, you are going to be questioned in your research by a, by a, a set of judges or, or by, a, or by um, professors who participate in the process of blind reviewing the evaluation of papers. Okay. Move six was present in in a hundred percent of the papers. They they described the procedures to collect data like questionnaire and interviews and etc. Move seven was the statistical test that, that were used. The majority of the papers had all the, these moves. Okay. And the moves 9, 10, and 11. Ah, was next, were, were next. Ah, move 8 is here. Move 8 was concerned with adjustments and exclusions from the original population normally given at move 5, and exponents of which there were many in the corpus, including withdrew, refused, declined, were ex excluded, and etc. So when you uh, say that you, were, you, you used an access accessibility sample, you, you try to say that your population is is one set of people, but because uh, some refuse to to be interviewed or or to respond your your scale or questionnaire, or because um, there was some constraints in the budget of of your project, you 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 may have to restrict a, a little or a lot your sample to study. Move nine was the representation of data in tables. You can represent data in graphs too, in, in graphs, uh, uh, some uh, uh, pie, pie graphics or uh, column graphics or bar graphics, etc. Move 10 was the discussion of data in words. So the discussion, I, I, I'd like to make clear that it's not just describing the data that it, uh, there is in the table or in the graphic with some words that you, you wrote um, with your opinion about that, that uh, graphic or that table. You have to uh, say what it, it, it's in the table, but you have to uh, put that in discussion with some author from the literature review, so people uh, can know that you are building theory with your present data that you collected in, the, in your field work. Okay. It's almost over. Ah, move 13 presented the central achievements of the study. So it's almost uh, near the completion of the paper. We usually make this move in the final considerations or in the natural sciences in the conclusions. 
we don't uh, talk about conclusions in the human sciences, usually. Move for 14. Contextualize the research procedures and findings in a relevant research tradi tradition, and almost always by pointing out that they were in accord or compared well with those of another study. So, in the discussion uh, section, you make this in a more detailed way. In the final considerations, you make this in a more uh, summarized way. So, another thing that you may do in your conclusions or final considerations is to put that theme or, or theory in relation to another theories that try to address the same subjects, the same uh, object of study. Like uh, when I was uh, in my thesis, I was uh, speaking strictly about uh, cultural standards uh, that uh, people use to, to see themselves and evaluate people from other cultures with that cultural standards. But there was other theories that were uh, used to address these cultural questions, cultural is issues. So, uh, in the final considerations, I could put these uh, other theories to, to dialogue with my uh, own area of study, like cultural intelligence, like cultural patterns from uh, Margaret Mead, and uh, cultural shock. And there, are, there are other theories, but if I did not get the focus to study just cultural standards, I couldn't achieve the, the, the depth that was necessary to, to terminate the study. I, I can't uh, uh, get a, a theory in my work that is spilled over many things because uh, this way you can't, you can't get the, the depth that you need to, to study a thing. Um, at one level, that. this move, the, the last move, validates the paper by claiming membership of the academic community. So you, in this, this almost uh, last move, you try to locate your study um, side to side to the other studies in the area of your study. Move 15 is like uh, that sections in the conclusions where you write what went wrong in your work, what were the limitations, and what are your suggest suggestions to, to other uh, researchers, to other managers, and uh, to the community in general, to a, a, a reader that is uh, um, outside of the practitioner or the researcher people. Okay. So, when uh, this guy from the medical area uh, say, uh, um, talks about the discussion uh, section, he says that the main characteristic of this section is that it's ex speculative. You don't uh, say things for sure that you, you are certain that this is right. You always tentatively try to to make a, a, a statement about the differences and the similarities that exist, exist between the literature and your work, what you found in your field work or documental work and etc. Okay. In the conclusions, uh, the, the author says that uh, it's common to 
that, that most researchers don't know how to articulate the professional and the academical uh, findings. So if we can do this, this, this kind of articulation between our uh, academical findings and, and what can be useful to the professional people, we are uh, doing a great differential in our writing of papers. Okay, this first paper is true. Let's go to the second. Opa, we don't need to save this. Let's go to the second. Ah, okay. Let's open it with the other one because of the full screen feature. Um, okay. The second article is a little longer, 15 pages long. Is about uh, how and why uh, researchers use uh, information technology to write papers. This was really re relevant in 2002 because uh, we, we can remember, uh, at least I was able to, to deal with a, a, a personal computer at home in 1980, no, 1995 or 4. Uh, at work, people were dealing with computers and, uh, five Five, five years before. So in 2002, the internet was just beginning. So we, we didn't have a, 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 a custom of really using uh, uh, internet like we use today. There was not so, so many um, paper in, in, in data banks like today. People were used to go to the library and uh, make photocopies of, of, of papers in, in, the, in the journals. Everything was very different. Uh, the, the, the way that we used to, to make uh, files of summaries of papers were different too. So um, we, we do today many things that um, are very mu much quicker than people used to do in that, at that time. So uh, when I, I supervise people that are a, a little older or are not very used to IT, I, I see this difference. They, they work a little, a, a little, at a little low, lower speed but they usually don't forget what they learned. When we, we work with uh, younger uh, uh, students, people learn fast and forget fast. This is, uh, uh, th there is um, some advantage, uh, advantages and some, some restraints. Okay. This is okay. This is okay too. Everybody read this article or not? Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, this is a. Uh, a simple statement that is very common sense. Experience with computer technology itself may, may have a considerable impact on how well and for what tasks individuals use computers. So I remember my supervisor uh, um, disclosing to me how she used to do research when there was no, no internet, just computer. She went to Europe with a a, a very big uh, suitcase of, uh, I don't know how to say this sketch in English. The, 
some uh, uh, three and a half uh, inches discs from from uh, uh, some time ago. So she uh, packed a, a very huge uh, suitcase with many discs to to carry around with the papers that she were she was going to use in, in her thesis because there was no internet to download the papers. So when she went uh, uh, came back to Brazil, some uh, some of the discs were, were with bad blocks <laughs> because of the uh, of the carrying uh, of, of that luggage and the, the the way that people just show show out the the luggage in the in the airport. So uh, sometimes uh, it can we can be desperate because of this operational. Uh, uh, things that happened in the past. Fortunately, uh, today when uh, there is some error in the archive, uh, we just have to download it again. She didn't have that chance. Uh, and people uh, in the past, when they were were uh, putting the the thesis or the, the master dissertation in the paper. The, it was in the, uh, how do I say, drive machine, I don't know. There, there was not, uh, uh, more, more in the past uh, even. Uh, and then if you, you wrote anything wrong, you had to write the whole page again. The, it was very more uh, difficult to, to do research in the past that, that it's, Today, ah, there is a um, uh, a funny story about uh, I think it's from Carlos Drummond de Andrade. It's not very academical, but it's because of the IT uh, that that was there was in the in the time at the time. The guy was was to to translate the whole Proust uh, literature. The, the whole uh, 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 collection of books of proof from uh, from French to to Portuguese. So the guy was translating and putting the, the papers in the table. So uh, on the table. So uh, one night he went to 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 the bar to the pub after translating some papers, and then. Uh, at the time, he he left the window open, and the the book was 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 called the the I I don't think how to to say I don't know how to say I think it's the prisoner prisoner everybody understand prisoner some some uh, someone that is is in the in jail so. Uh, when he was at the bar, he saw many papers flying around, and the editor ne next day uh, asked him, uh, "How is your translation?" And then Drummond just uh, answered that the prisoner w was was gone, just left the jail. <laughs> okay, but the, this is a, a thing that. Uh, happened in the past because they didn't have uh, HDs, they didn't have uh, computers, and th th they didn't have the, the techno technology that we have today. Okay. Um, okay, okay, okay. Just a little. Ah, okay. Tá. Um, some some people from this research said, uh, so, some not. The majority of people from this research said they had access to the computer at work. Um, for professor, associate professor, mm -hmm. professor, assistant professor, and graduate student. In some other point of the text, they say that the 
monitor size is different uh, according to the area of study. People from physics and mathematics, I don't know why, they prefer bigger, bigger monitors. But uh, people in the social sciences and human that are no, not very fond of IT uh, like uh, small computers. I don't know why this, this happened. Uh, man, many people use IBM compatible computers. Um, today, um, uh, the most uh, researchers and students at the the high school and the lower grades of, of uh, US use Macintosh machines. At that time, uh, they they used to to buy more uh, IBM. Uh, ma ma machines. Okay. 